Welcome to the Rise Above Summit, and this is the environmental dimension. Today, I have with me Balaka Gashel, and let me tell you a little bit about Balaka. She is an environmental writer, living a simple, low-waste life, poised on faith and empathy. She helps people find fulfillment by lowering their carbon footprints and to build a safer future for children. For businesses, Balaka helps to strategize their role in shaping a circular economy to ensure long-term profits. And she says and knows that the world needs everybody to create a legacy of well-being for our children and it's our responsibility together. So let's do some good and do it with harmony and respect. Welcome, Balaka. I'm so happy to have you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Patty, um, to have me on your amazing show. And um, yes, I hope that the journey that I'm talking about today will um, create impact or at least a thought a seed going into uh, many of our listeners' minds to take it forward way more than I have been able to do. You know, you know I so I, I believe what you're going to talk about today, Balaka, is the momentum of the baby steps on, on a greening journey. Yes. Okay. Yes. Just to, because many people have asked me, why am I living this way? I mean, what is it that made me change so, you know, uh, not dramatically, but consistently over the years. And that's when I thought of these baby steps. I did not really change overnight, and neither do I expect anyone else to do. Everyone's journey, of course, the pacing will depend on the urge and the environmentally supportive situations. But as there is no finish line, actually, we keep taking baby steps to get better and better in every journey, right? So, yes, I wanted to talk about it. Yes. So I started my career as a journalist, and always we were taught about the five W's and the how, you know, the five W and one H family of questions, and the what and the when, who, where, where did it begin, who influenced me, and uh, when did this, you know, the first seed came to my mind or the first urge and what is this green journey and well how difficult or what is the difficulty in making the change and of course the big why always the big why is there the last of the w's and how we need it right um so to start i would say i'm kind of following that same format here and i would say that i didn't even know i was becoming green. It's just that I was a quiet child initially who hardly spoke. <laughs> and I had so many questions that I didn't know if they were smart enough uh, to be asked. So I basically started observing, uh, reading, and finding my own answers. And a lot of it was modeled for me, the lifestyle. So I didn't even know I was green until I came to America and made significant changes. Only at the later stage, I actually realized that this is uh, different. But change is always difficult. You know, we don't want to pay any price for the benefits we get in life. There's so many supportive things in this world that right from the day we are born, there's, you know, milk and mother's breast starting from there to all the food and whatever else that has kept us alive but we take things for granted we don't want to pay the price and that reminds me of the story of the pied piper of hamelin you know how the rats were a problem and this piper came played his flute and all the rats left with him and when he asked for his price the king said well, well that's too expensive i'm not going to pay that and everyone kind of supported him until he gave his warning many times that I'm going to take, you know, make it hard for y'all if you don't pay me. 
And finally, he did play the flute and take the children. We have now happy ending versions of that story. <laughs> but back in the days of fairy tales, there was no happy ending because life is kind of ruthless if we are not careful about whatever resources that supporting our lives, taking the problems away. So that makes me think that, hey, I need to make a change. It's like the price that I have to pay for the future because the children are our future. We can haggle over profit a lot. I tripled my profit, business profit in just a few months or whatever I did. But the impact of everything is going to be on the well-being of the children. Um, so for the sake of civilization and for our own love for our own children, both ways, I feel responsible. So coming, that's kind of the what. And now, when did this change happen? As I said, when I came to this country, in spite of my minimalistic upbringing, my parents lived on less in strange ways that almost needs a book by itself. But I, I lived with simplest furniture and the simplest curtains and the simplest things in life or not having many things, but I had this shelves full of books, you know? So it's not that my parents were miserly, rather they reallocated things, their resources by priority, health, is that education and medication are the primary things that the family has to have. So coming from there, I always loved stuff though. You know, when I went to friends' houses, it was cute, you know, stuffed toys or fancy things and great lifestyles. Oh, why don't I have it? I didn't understand money very well. But coming to this country, of course, when I started earning as a school teacher and my husband had a good job, we were slowly getting into that lifestyle that America was teaching us. And when I became, you know, as a teacher, I started seeing the wastage that was happening. And even before that, as a room mom, I was seeing wastage. But as a teacher, I, I could see the back end in the school, how much they had to throw away. I couldn't blame them somewhat, you know, like some of was personal choice. Some was like the school system wanted things out of the building within hours you have no time to reuse those for other things just have to throw them away i started asking those big questions i didn't just to myself and where would i start i started with me i couldn't talk about it out loud until a colleague said hey balaka all this throwing away must be really burning you up because in India, you all live with less, you know, whether it's due to poverty or whatever else, you all live with less. I said, thank you so much for bringing it up. Yes, we don't see that I'm done and sick, you know, children having lunches and then said, oh, I'm full, I'm done. So even if there's food on your plate, you have the right to throw it away and call it done. We didn't do that. We were like, you cannot waste food because food should not be wasted. Take as little as you need, not more than that. And so resources and food and everything, I started reading up again. There's so much of reading material, but it's kind of tucked in very um, discreetly, you know, not blatantly, um, apparent in American society. I don't know really why, but that was one of my challenges that I want to change, that to make these things much more open and visible to people. And I eventually decided to leave my job and become a green business writer uh, and also children's writer. I write for children. Several are of getting ready for publication through stories, through uh, my memoir-like blogs, that how we, wherever we are in our consumption line, how can we change businesses? How can those businesses which are trying to bring something unique into the market, how to give them the voice and teach them how to do it 
not to make it visible because they don't always know that they're so enamored or dedicated towards making it that how to publicize it is a part they hadn't focused on and regular businesses that want to be green what steps can they take to make it greener not a green washing as such but every little step that they take needs to be out to the public that i'm not at the perfect level yet but hey this is one thing i'm doing for your future for your children that builds a beautiful trust between the people so i'm trying to evolve as that voice there are very few environment business writers in the world now there needs to be many more and i'm trying to bond with the others so that we really make a network and create a platform where there will be more interested millennials who really see more into this consumption processes than our generation okay so that's kind of the when you know how did this all begin the who influenced me you must have guessed by now that it's my parents <laughs> with their you know choices but given the previous generation you know through my parents i heard stories of how my grandparents even their aunts and uncles um actually took steps to live on less not because they were poor but because it is the prudent thing to do but it was brought to me as a way of creativity see you can just if, if your uniform school uniform is looking a little old just flip them and use the back to make it new which one of my grand aunts did you know i call her bee kishima you know bee meaning she's biscotti that's what she loved so <laughs> so bee aunt I, I, we looked up to her for all this creative ideas she would make with her curtains she would um kind of flip the one purpose to do something absolutely different she brought up several children even through the times when her husband um had to lose his job for you know a financial turmoil the nation was going through she could balance it all because of her ingenuity you know but the real people again who actually pressed the button and got me started is are the people who were wasting a lot in america so i'm thankful to them too but had i not seen it i probably would have just stuck on the creativity side of whatever i learned from my family but this got me started on knowing and reading up and seeing what happens to a product where does it go what happens when i'm throwing so much stuff away it goes to a landfill landfill issues i have no idea about it just the trash truck takes takes everything out the neighborhood looks clean wow America is a clean country that's what the whole world thinks but the world clean neighborhoods yes clean offices but then what it's a disaster if you read the book garbology you know it's just written in such a lucid way but you get to see the whole landfill politics that's going on those opened my eyes i had no idea this is a term called carbon footprint i didn't know that a cell phone needs a lot of water to be made or a car or my t-shirt my clothing needs gallons of water like hundreds and thousands of gallons i wouldn't believe it looked dry to me so water footprint carbon footprint i didn't know how much gasoline goes behind recycling like i might be very excited that oh i recycle my plastic bottle but hey where does this bottle go how many miles does it travel before it is made into something else like thousands of gallons are going behind that not recycling is actually pretty cool it's the coolest thing when i tell people i do not like to recycle they look at me like she must be crazy like what she's green and she doesn't like to recycle so those are things the lot of information is required and i don't expect everyone to change overnight so that's where i use my storytelling techniques my writing abilities to take it slowly in little bits of thoughts to my friends to the community 
and as a business person to the rest of the world. It's a slow journey though. But what are the benefits? I can, or I can say um, that where does this take me? Or I told you where I started, but where does this take me? It takes me to the big why, of course. Why do I do it? I mean, what's my joy? It's to live so differently than the mainstream. It takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot of effort. And it takes a lot of faith because every day through that hardship, I have to tell myself, you know, it's still so good. The benefits are so much better. I would rather continue with that than give it up. Um, so that's where the baby steps come in. Because every two, three weeks, I kind of master one habit, and then I sow the next one. When three ideas arrive to me at the same time, as I've been a club with groups, there are many um, zero waste groups on Facebook, the global group, groups of your city. There are no buy groups. So in your city, wherever you are, I'm part of the no buy Houston group. So we do a lot of, you know, trading or it's possible to do uh, that you are just giving away or you're exchanging thing with someone in the neighborhood or outside, but all locally. So after joining those groups, I have so many ideas. So I said, okay, one thing at a time, how can this be applied to homes, to parents for bringing up children on less money? We spend so much more than what's needed to bring up a happy, healthy child because we do not think of the green steps involved. Once we do, we'll start seeing the huge possibilities of enriching lives of children. So for parents, for businesses, I think from all dimensions that how is this one step that I'm inculcating in myself, how can this reach a, you know, a lot of other people in different areas of their life? So that's where the journey, and I'm seeing that as I'm adding baby steps, the momentum of the past baby steps makes it more energetic journey. And I would say that um, a lot of fun things have added along the way that I didn't even know, um, right? Uh, like, um, I feel good, but not only because it's saving me a lot, lot of money that I'm not buying stuff. Very subtle, it's saving me time. You might say, you might actually question that thing. Like, well, okay, you just said it takes a lot of hard work to make that change happen. You have to redo things in a roundabout ways. And how can you say it takes money? Can I say time? Well, it does take effort. I didn't say it saves time means it doesn't save you effort. It's the effort is time consuming, but at the same time, let's say I'm reusing a box to serve another purpose. I'm sitting in my home, I'm sitting at the table, working out, making something out of that box. I'm not having to dress up and run to a store and get stuck in traffic or coordinate with other people. You know, I'm just mostly by myself with my creativity or interacting with the kind of people that I like to create that repurposed item. I didn't feel the rush inside me, you know, because I didn't have to run around. So time is being used. There is effort behind it, but it is rush free. So it's like I started discovering that there's a power of being slow as well. Many of my creative ideas are taking time to grow as I'm applying for my business inventory as well. But that power of slow actually gives my mind a lot of sanity and peace. It's so subtle to describe it, but just there are tons of creative other things that I make masks out of kind of everything, not the mask, pandemic mask, no but the face masks that we can beautify, and I use them on Halloween. <laughs> Kids love it because I give my little lecture how I made it, using a shoe box or, um, you know, the chocolate packets that they're treats 
came in and said, Dan, I'm watching all these groups and the parents go like, wow, this is so cool. That's another idea sharing. It's teaching while I've been creative. It's joy in many different ways. So it saves me the rush time. And of course, saving resources for the earth and knowing it gives me happiness. And to think that I'm not only helping my child, I'm helping a whole, the whole generation of children. You might question and say, oh, how much is that? You know, if you save, let's say, a bag of waste every week, how is it saving many kids? It has that little bit of effect, you know? And when thousands of other women or parents or business people will take one tiny step, it will impact everybody. You know, for education and medication, you can help your own kids, right? But when you are polluting, or I would say in my case, when I'm polluting and dousing my garden with, let's say, chemical fertilizers, and one rain takes a whole lot of that into the storm drains, and many fishes die in the Gulf, <laughs> to me, it's like that it hurt an entire generation of not a fish, those who consumed even any food that came from that ecosystem, it hurt everybody's health that little bit. But if I don't do that, it saved, it benefited that little bit. So you see the momentum is not only about how good I feel or how tiny my waste is, but the momentum is kind of percolating slowly, infiltrating into other generations. And if that stays, I tell my son, when he says, oh, mom, you're doing so much, you know, it must be stressful. I tell him that it's all worth it when it saves one day of one person's life from being, you know, unhealthy to healthy. All my hard work is worth it, and it's also giving me joy in the process. So to wrap it up, I would say, Look, there are some side benefits, like I'm afraid less these days. Actually, I have a different take on fear. I have a different take on um, success. You know, success on business is not just how much money you made that year. Yeah, I keep hearing about when I started making uh, four, four figures, I was like, okay, I'm getting there. When it became five figures, I started attending all these webinars that made six figures a standard. And now seven figures is the standard. And I'm like, when am I ever going to feel that I am successful? I am there. And let me start feeling successful right now. That, do, that will not stunt my growth at all. But let me feel, so as a joke, I said, okay, every figure has a decimal and two zeros behind it, right? So that my five figure becomes seven figures. No one talked about where the decimal would be. So that's my, <laughs> so my five figures, in my mind, I said, yeah, it is seven figures with a decimal in it. Um, I live a peaceful life. Life is quite enriching. And any business that wants to take those significant baby steps, when, if anyone gets enthused that, yeah, I need to try that, um, get in touch with me. I'm planning on starting some little, again, baby step courses sometime in future, some baby steps books for children as well as for parents and businesses, um, tips that you can take um, into your life, wherever you are. Uh, it, you know, if people say it's late, but I would still say, start now. Don't worry about how late it has been, start now. It's just like thinking, okay, the exams are there. I won't worry about what, how bad I've been in the past. Let the change begin now. So my website is thegreenwriter.com. Pretty easy, right? Thegreenwriter.com. So if you put a forward slash and gifts behind it, you will find some simple gifts there. Some more will be added over time. You can, you can or cannot. I give that option whether you need my newsletters. Again, I'm not a hardcore marketer, um, but I like the soft marketing styles again. So feel free to get in touch with me any way you like. My Gmail is also simple, balaka.hushal at gmail.com. 
So any which way, get in touch with me on Facebook. I would love to interact with you, share my ideas, and take yours, learn from you, and make it better. And um, if uh, you have any questions, you can put them down right here. You know, I, I, some of you have already been putting, so I will be there for all your questions. <laughs> Wonderful, so Balaka. Anything, Patty, you want to wrap up with? Please? No, no. Actually, this is wonderful. You've given everybody so many things to think about and think about what we're leaving for the next generation. And, you know, the world is such a such a gift that we want to try to keep it as, as big of a treasure as right, long as right. we possibly even can. This pandemic, it kind of taught us so much. It made us wiser. And also, I look for simpler joys, like I couldn't go to any show or any program, so I did freeform dancing in the, I don't know, or sang out loud to myself, did a lot of wild kind of gardening with the leaves that I don't throw away anymore. So my right. more... So right, but recycling more. those leaves from mulch <laughs> to keep your, your gardens yeah. weed-free, right? Yes, so there. my garden became my beautiful journey, which also helps my thinking process, made me more, um, you know, humble, green, more spiritual, um, minimalist, and happy, you know, not mm -hmm. complaining, but as I said, let me use the pandemic as my mm, next catapult, you know, to go higher. We don't want any more of these, right? No. We need to drop them right here. Wonderful. Well, thanks for being with us on Under the Environmental Dimension. Thank you so much, Patty. Love this opportunity. Thank you so much You're for welcome. having me. Bye-bye. <laughs>